Welcome to Science, Health and Healing, Library of Children's Health Corps. I'm Dr. Majid Ali. The subject of this article is Exercise 108 Combined Fat and Sugar Burning Exercise. Please also look at the companion articles, Fat Burning Exercise and Sugar Burning Exercise. Evolution's intelligent design has conferred upon us human beings, as it has on most other animals, two metabolic modes. One, sugar burning for rapid bursts of energy generation so we can escape life-threatening danger. For example, get out of a house on fire. And the second is for slow, sustained energy generation for healthful aging. For a heart to tick, for example, for 100 years, 110 years, without skipping beats, without going into heart palpitations, and of course, without failing or developing heart attacks. Same thing can be true of the brain. Now, most exercise, unless you're driven by impulses which I do not understand and you're huffing and puffing and you're pushing your heart rate because some ill-informed, ignorant exercise physiologist has told you that exercise is no good for the heart unless you push your heart rate to a, re to a level that he has determined by multiplying your age with your father's age and dividing it by your mother's age and adding your sister's boyfriend's age and then subtracting the telephone number of someone that you detest. I know I'm trying to be absurd here, but it is my intention to be absurd to lay bare to you the stupid nonsense which passes as exercise physiology. The good examples of Sugar burning exercises are boxing, sprinting, competitive athletes, tennis. Good exercise examples of fat burning exercises are walking prayerfully, meditatively, gentle rebounding, stretches. And of course, most people actually do combine both. My purpose of doing this program is to suggest to you that number one, you should be aware if you're huffing and puffing and your heart is beating fast, you're in a sugar burning exercise, you cannot lose weight, nor can you truly strengthen your heart with it. I'm talking about the lessons from centenarian and near centenarians that I have received directly from them. My patients or from my grandfather, for example, people in my extended family. Now, I'm not telling you that you should not let your teenager engage in a competitive athlete. That's not my purpose. But when I talk about exercise, I talk about functionality, healthful aging, graceful aging, prevention of disease. This series, 15 segment series on exercise, was prompted by an article published on the front page in New York Times on May 31st, 2012, reading, for some, exercise may increase heart risks, comma, researchers find they're phony researchers. These are exercise physiologists who do not have common sense. I do not believe they themselves enjoy good health. I don't think they have the intelligence to listen to centenarians and near centenarians to find out what is the real exercise that evolution gave it to us so we can live long, useful, productive, pain-free lives. I suggest that you look at as many segments in this 15 segment series so you get a broad holistic view of the core message that I'm giving in this program. Of course, my book, The Ghora and Exercise, Olympic Exercise, is devoted to this subject. Children's Health Code is a nonprofit foundation funded and founded by Talat, my wife, and I for the mission of providing children all over the world authentic information unpolluted by corporate collusions and untainted by ideologic transgressions. Please forward this YouTube segment to your email, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn contacts. Visit our website, www.kids123.org.
kids123.org. There is so much information on that. And then, of course, I also suggest you to go to wiki-medical.org, where I published a very large number of scholarly articles. Thank you for joining me and do join me again. Thank you so much.